Hey friends, welcome back. In today's show, we're gonna talk about minimizing anti-nutrients in your food from plants, grains, nuts, seeds, and legumes. Now, I know some of you don't even eat any of these food substances because you're on a zero-carb diet, you're benefiting from that. I think many people that benefit from a carnivorous-style diet have gastrointestinal issues to begin with or autoimmune disease to begin with, and they notice benefits by just omitting grains, veggies, nuts, legumes, and so forth from the diet. Many of you, and I found with clients over the years, and actually myself, is I sometimes get bored of just having animal products. I might want to have, you know, maybe some nut milk, for example, or some fermented veggies or things like that. And so there are ways to minimize the anti-nutrients in vegetables and grains, nut seeds and legumes. And so I want to share with you this image here from a paper that we're going to be talking about today about the anti-nutrients, where they're coming from, which anti-nutrient is in there, and then also what are the clinical consequences of this? And this might help some people if they're eating a lot of plant-based products, again, vegetable matter or grain products or nuts or seeds, and they're having digestive issues or they're having autoimmunity. You might want to know that, yeah, that, that plant or that grain or that veggie might have ascribed health benefits from pundits, but there are anti-nutrients in that possibly, and there's ways to minimize exposure to those anti-nutrients while still enjoying these compounds. So lectins are huge. These are in grains. These are in legumes. These are in some nuts and also vegetables. And so there's different ways that you can reduce the lectin content. We're going to talk about it very soon. Oxalates. This is a very pro- very big problem for people that have joint pain. So if you notice you have arthritis, osteoarthritis, uh, you wake up with with all these sore joints. I found clinically over the decades that oxalates can be a major problem. These are found in spinach, Swiss chard, sorrel, beet, beetroot, uh, potatoes, and also grains as well. And so this may inhibit calcium absorption, may increase calcium and kidney stone formation. And so this can be a pro- problem. You know, sometimes when people get older, they have bone spurs and this, and I think that is a great indication to get rid of the oxalates in the diet or prepare your foods in such a way, we're gonna talk about soon how to do that uh, to minimize oxalate exposure. We know phytates are really found. These are anti-nutrients that inhibit all sorts of zinc absorption, calcium absorption, and also iron absorption. These are found in nuts, seeds, uh, all sorts of cereal grains uh, and legumes uh, as well. So phytates are problematic. Goy- Deterogens are really common in the brassica type foods. And so we know that, you know, uh, Brussels sprouts and broccoli and cabbage and turnips and, and all this. And so this can lead to hypothyroidism and thyroid issues, which are problematic. We know phytoestrogens are usually found in soy-based products as well as flaxseed, uh, other nuts and other uh, vegetables as well. And these can have endocrine disrupting effects. And again, I'm not saying all plants are bad, but you just need to understand that there's anti-nutrients in plants. Tannins are found in coffee, tea, chocolate, grapes, berries, as well as whole grains. And these also may negatively impact iron absorption and much more. So you might be saying, well, Mike, you're talking about all these bad things. Well, what can we do to minimize the exposure to these anti-nutrients if you or your family like to still have some of these food type products? Well, when it comes to any grain such as rice, bread, or nut or seed, get familiar with soaking, sprouting before cooking. This can really help to decrease the anti-nutrient load uh, in the products. And so Anytime I cook rice for the family, whether it's a forbidden wild rice or I make potatoes, peeling the potato skins, uh, fermenting the potatoes beforehand, then cooking them can really do wonders for reducing the anti-nutrient load. I've shared with you the book by Bill Schindler, Eat Like a Human. We talked about other ways to ferment potatoes in that book, but potato skins, yam skins have a lot of oxalates and other uh, anti-nutrients in there. So peeling potatoes can be very helpful. Fermenting them beforehand can be helpful. If you're cooking grains or having any nuts of any kind, soak them overnight before you cook them. It improves the digestibility, the taste. They just taste better. Uh, they're, they're a better product. Uh, oxalates can also be reduced in these compounds, vegetable or grain compounds, by soaking, boiling, steaming as well. Uh, phytates, uh, fermentation is a great way to reduce the phytates. And also lectins can be decreased by fermenting. So to be totally honest with you, the only vegetables I really consume now are fermented vegetables. I'm not anti-vegetable per se, but I think when you have fermented veggies versus unfermented veggies, sometimes you see, have, see unfermented veggies come out the other end the same way they came in. So meaning that you're not really absorbing and digesting these compounds, even though they might have purported health benefits of, you know, whatever, fill in the blank, uh, phytonutrient and or micronutrient, but 
fermentation is going to improve the digestibility of many of these compounds. Okay, by how can you reduce the tannins, say in almonds, for example, we'll soak the almonds overnight before and peel the skins off, then use the almonds. Uh, I found this is good for making almond milk. Sometimes my daughter likes that. And with the leftover meat of the almonds, I'll make those into pancakes. And she absolutely loves them, Put, puts a little honey on there with some eggs and they're absolutely phenomenal. So uh, cooking, blanching uh, can be very helpful. So unfortunately, the phytoestrogen from flax, from soy, it's really hard to prep those in such a way that you minimize that. So I suggest just not having a lot of soy. If you do have soy, have it in the form of fermented natto, uh, minimal, a couple days a week uh, at most for men. And what about goiterogens? Well, steaming and boiling might reduce the goiterogen, so that's something to consider. Uh, also, there's a lot of tips in this book, again, Eat Like a Human by Bill Schindler. Definitely check it out. So Bill is obviously pro, low-carb, keto, carnivore, but he also includes strategies and cooking methods to help minimize the anti-nutrients in commonly consumed products, whole grains, legumes, vegetable products, tubers, root vegetables. He has a lot of good strategies here. And I think this is a more long-term sustainable solution for a lot of people. It's hard to convince a family of six to only eat meat, you know, for the rest of their life. Uh, it's, I say 1% of the population is going to actually go through with that. So what are some other things that we can do? Well, there's a lot of strategies in this book, like fermenting sweet potatoes, fermenting carrots, fermenting just regular old potatoes, making sauerkraut kimchi, making sourdough bread at home, letting it rise naturally with a mother culture. I think this is a, another strategy that can be very helpful. And it gets you closer to your food, which is part of the problem. We're so divorced from where our food is grown, how it's prepared, and many, many of us overconsume food as a result of that. And food is not being prepared uh, in such a way to minimize these anti-nutrients that we just talked about. So hopefully you found this helpful and I will link Dr. Bill's book in the description below, Phenomenal Read, will really help you reconnect with food and how food should be prepared to maximize its absorption for human consumption. So hopefully you found this helpful. I'll also link that study that I mentioned below. Uh, that's important for those of you that are on a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet or know someone who is so that they're more aware of food prep and meal prep and some of the steps they should take in order to minimize these anti-nutrients that could be harming their health, their digestion, uh, and also increasing joint pain and the like. We'll catch you in a future episode down the road.